Hi, welcome back to the layout. Today we're going to be taking a look at wood chip operations on the Asheville District layout, which closely resemble the prototype. Our trip today is going to start with an early morning here at the Asheville Engine Shops. Today we're going to follow a local, P87, which is going to leave Asheville and head to Old Fort. There it's going to pick up some empty wood chip cars at the paper mill and then return them to the yard. Later they'll be taken and sorted for an outbound train, where they'll be loaded and then the cycle will continue. However, before the train leaves, the crew needs to get the engines ready. This consists of turning the appropriate lights on and making sure that they're consisted and ready for the main line. The lead locomotive for the eastbound leg of the trip is going to be a Norfolk Southern Dash 8. Once the consist is ready to go, the crew is going to get permission from the tower and then reverse out of the engine shop and onto the yard. Today the train is going to be running light power up to the Old Fort Yard. Light power is a term for running without a train. They're going to be just running the engines themselves on the main line up to pick up the cars. Sometimes P87 will have cars to take eastbound up the hill to Old Fort or various uh, locations and customers along the way. However, that's not the case today. So they're going to run light power. It'll be a quick trip up the hill. And here you can see them reversing past the uh, yard office. This is where train crews would either pick up or drop off assignments once they've started or completed a shift. P87 is going to continue reversing out of the engine shop until it hits the yard lead. Then it's going to reverse direction and start heading eastbound and request permission from the dispatcher to leave the yard. With permission to leave the yard at Asheville, the dispatcher has given P87 a signal through the control point at Biltmore and up the S line towards Old Fort. We're a little farther up the line at the signals at Coleman, and we see P87 at dawn coming through with an approach signal. Although you can't see the signal in the opposite direction, it's yellow, meaning it's an approach, and the dispatcher has coordinated a meet with a westbound freight train 135 at the following siding. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But for now, enjoy a few shots of P87 making its way through the old port loops. Here at the west end of Growstone Siding, we see the westbound freight headed towards Asheville approaching on the main line. The dispatcher has coordinated the meet so that the longer, heavier freight train, 135, is going to hold the main. Meanwhile, P87, which is just light power, is going to take the siding. That's pretty typical of how you might find a meet coordinated in ABS territory, or automatic signal territory. And that's because train crews have to walk less distance, and it's just logistically easier to have the shorter train take the siding. An interesting note about the signals here is that there's actually two of them. There's a switch indicator light, which is the small one on the ground, and then there's the typical ABS or automatic signals up high. 
the signals up high are going to be the ones that tell the train crews of the condition of the track ahead. So for instance, since 135 is on the main line, it's going to be red, saying you probably shouldn't go past this. The one on the ground is simply a switch indicator, and it's better visibility than a switch stand. So it's going to be red if it's lined for the siding, which it is in this case, or green if it's lined for the main line. Like I said, it's just for a little bit better visibility, and that's why you might see a train pass a red switch indicator. However, another interesting note about signal operations here is that a train actually can pass a red signal if it's an intermediate or ABS signal. And what that means is that after coming to a stop like P87 has done here, the train crew can proceed at restricted speeds. So, like they would in real life, they're going to take the siding, and then once P87 has cleared the main line, the switch will be thrown back for the main line, and 135 will be able to continue westbound down the hill towards Ashland. With P87 in the siding, 135 can now continue westbound down the hill towards Asheville. At the other end of Grovestone Siding, the east end, PD7 will go back onto the main line and then head towards Old Fort, where it'll be able to pick up the widget card. A little farther up the line, we come to the town of Old Fort. This is a prototype location on the S line, though if you've noticed and listened to some of the names I've seen and are familiar with the prototype, you'll notice that things are a little bit out of order, and this is a prototype freelance layout, so even though Old Fort doesn't have an operational paper mill anymore, it kind of combines Old Fort and Canton and a lot of the different things that we've seen growing up um, into one layout. So a little bit of compression and modification to the prototype here, but it's close enough for us. And one other note in this scene is that it looks like a, a little relay is out in the grade crossing, so that's uh, something we got to tweak, but I did notice that as well. After arriving at Old Fort Yard, PD7 needs to assemble the outbound train for Asheville. There's a total of 30 empty wood chip cars at the paper mill yard, which need to be assembled, and they're divided onto three different tracks. So, after coupling up for the first cut of cars, the crew is then going to swap ends of the consist. Once on the other side of the consist, with the Dash 9 leading for the westbound leg of the trip, the crew then can begin switching and assembling the train. Paper mills are often large and complex industries which are served by the railroad. That's one of the reasons we chose to model them. They take in a lot of cars like wood chips, for example, which is a main raw material for the paper making process. However, they also take in cars like tank cars and covered hoppers with other raw materials and then ship out the finished product a lot of times in box cars as well. In the background, you can see the four SD40-2s. That's a separate local, P31, which is used to switch out the uh, various spurs and sidings here at the paper mill, and then take cars back to Asheville. It kind of overlaps with the P87 local at times. And here we see P87 coupling up to the third and final cut of wood chip cars for the outbound trip to Asheville.
With its outbound train assembled and permission from the dispatcher to return all the way to Asheville, the local can now depart Old Fort with a clear signal. We're back at the Old Fort Loops and again see P87 coming through the signals at Coleman. This time, however, it's headed westbound with the empty woodchip cars in tow, and it's in full dynamics as it heads down the mountain towards Asheville. After returning the train to Asheville, the crew's going to leave the empty wood chip cars on a yard track, where an outbound train will take them to the lumber mills, where they will be loaded and then return to Asheville to be taken back to the paper plant. But for now, the crew is done with their assignment. They're going to take the power back to the shop, tie them down, turn off the locomotives, and that'll be it for today. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about operations and how we run locals here on the layout. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.